everybody, my name is Jason Piercy and this is Out of the Fog. Guess what is back? The Mount Pearl Frosty Festival. Frosty's back, yes. Uh, myself and Laura Bell here from Out of the Fog are gonna host the Cauldron Lighting and Parade of Lights when we first start. Uh, but before that happens, they did a whole luncheon and there was interviews and we talked about everything that was coming up and we learned that Wonderbolt Circus is gonna perform again, which they've done the last number of years and it's all very exciting. So we're gonna dedicate this episode to all of those things. And we're gonna sit and talk with Betty Malone, who's the artistic director of Wonderbolt. Very, very fascinating person and a lot of cool stuff to say and a lot of cool stories to tell. But before I have that conversation, first, let me throw back to that luncheon and some of the cool chats that I had. I think you're gonna enjoy this. A lot of really wonderful, interesting, fantastic people. And I'm looking forward to the Frosty Festival. Hope you are too. Enjoy. So here I am with one of the most important people in all of the city of Mount Pearl and the Frosty Festival and some other guy who's just standing next to me. So, Frosty, this is your entire namesake. The entire thing is all about you. Are you the mascot or is it your festival? That's a good point. That's a really good point. One, one, one more question for you and then I'm going to... Look at this creepy guy. I'll talk to him. Um, if you think that Mount Pearl needs a new mayor, say nothing. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what to say about that. Well, like, I'm speechless too, so I guess that interview is... You're speechless. <laughs> You're the only person I know that talks more than me. Well, I could do the interview if you'd like. Uh, I feel like we've done that gag before. But I don't know if I'll get more words out of Frosty than you will. So, <laughs> but Frosty plays the part really, really well. It's a natural for him uh, this time of the year, or her. Um, you know, it's January, and it's a very frosty day today. Or uh, them. And them. And we're waiting now on the uh, festival to start, but that'll be February 8th. And as a community, we're really looking forward to that. So, um, Mayor Dave, how are you? I'm doing good. I haven't spoken. It feels like it's been it's been such a long time. So like true. for a while there, like we were interviewing constantly, and you were always giving me a hard time, mm. and then like you just stopped. Why you got to be so dramatic? Well, you know, COVID at the same time put a lot of bricks on everything, including it the did. Frosty Festival. And uh, you know, winter has been flu season traditionally, and COVID certainly raised its ugly head uh, this time last year. Um, but with the spike in some of the flu cases this past fall. Uh, you know, and the pandemic is really progressing into an endemic phase. We're looking forward to a festival this year, and you know, it's long overdue. We uh, this is number 41, and we lo frankly we lost the last two, yeah. and we dearly miss it. We love that social connection. Uh, we love the community spirit, and we're glad that we're going to have the full support of our residents and the region. To be honest, it'll be it'll be a fun time for everyone. And you are a very social and spirited person. Mm -hmm. That's been my understanding, of course. Yeah. Um, are, am I going to get you on stage with Laura Bell when we're doing the cauldron lighting, the opening ceremony sort Absolutely. of thing? Absolutely. We're yeah. so proud of Rogers for sponsoring that event. It'll be a lovely walk that night as we parade down the St. David's Park, which is really the center of the city. Uh, and, and it's we so use pretty so now. Many events. It's all lit up uh, post Christmas. And uh, yeah, we look forward to lighting the cauldron. And frankly, I hope we have weather much like we have today minus five. And may it be a frosty night. Well, I don't want a whole lot of, I know you have the same problem. If it gets really windy, you have, like, we yeah, both have a lot. To, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 no? a, it's a challenge, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mayor yeah. Dave Aker, thank you very much. We will see you real soon. Can't wait. Thanks, Jason. Good to see you, Frosty. Take care of everyone. And we'll go find a better mayor. Can you help me? We'll go look? Okay, let's go look. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and introduce this lady because I feel like it's part of my job, but I'm not sure I need to. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheila Guy Murphy, hi. Hello, 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 happy new year. Happy new year to you. Thanks, starting off great, isn't it? I think so, well. Frosty Festival. I'm starting off getting to talk to you, uh, and I understand you're doing some hosting with the festival. I'm going to host the Frosty Festival extravaganza that Tadar Events has created especially for the festival. It's called Just Be Who You Wanna Be, and it is chuck a block full there's almost a hundred on stage just be who you want to be feels like it's about your life uh well not my life maybe somebody else's but uh because i wanted to be tall that didn't work out so what i'm saying is just be who you want to be it's all about getting uh you know 
uh, inclusion, yes. feeling good about yourself. Yes. You are the best you who you are. It's all that kind of really good, share the love, fabulous vibe. We've got over a hundred performers on stage. Some of the best singers, dancers. We got divas dancers in there. Terry Andrews and nobody, nobody does musical theater better. But I, I'm aware. I've, I've I've witnessed some of this, but I have to say that that you don't have all of the best dancers because um, I, I mean I'm not there. Well, babe, they won't let me in there either. So w maybe you and I could like sneak in. I would love to go dancing with you. Oh my God, really? I really, really would. Like this Saturday? Or like right now? Okay. I, but uh, see. See you later. I know my way. Hello. Hi. Stop dancing. Hey. <laughs> I. <laughs> so what else do you have going on? What's coming up for you? Oh well. Because right I heard a little, little, little. Y'all want to know? Can I even begin? My head will just blow with well, excitement. Not all of it. Yes, all of it. Give me a little bit. Kinky boots, which is the freshest, the most fabulous, the most exciting thing to hit the arts and culture center since well, the last time I was on. But it is going to be. I mean, Terry Andrews again directing it. Yes. Star-studded cast, based on the true story. Uh, of a, 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 a guy who inherits a, a shoe factory from his dad and uh, uh, not making a go of it, he meets this incredible personality and they work together. And the bottom line is you can change the world if you change your mind. And that's what Kinky Boots, it is so feel good, it's for everyone, it is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So it's like Willy Wonka meets New York fashion meets love yourself for who you are. With really good boots. <laughs> Great boots. <laughs> what can I tell you? No, it's seriously, it is a tremendous show. And again, uh, Tada Events never yeah. does anything in a small way. So there'll be lots of glitz, lots of glamour, lots of incredible performers. Well, let's face it, it's not called Meh Events, it's called Tada ta Events, so it's got to be Tada. Exactly, and Terry is directing, as she is directing and, cr and has created the Frosty Festival uh, show, Just Be Who You Want to Be. And you get a little glimpse uh, in, in that show of uh, a couple of things that will be happening in Kinky Boots as well. So you're going to have to go to frostyfestival.ca on the 14th of January, 10 o'clock in the morning, buy yourself tickets to both of these events. Actually, the, it's free for, the, for uh, Just Be Who You Want to Be. Yeah, you just bring, uh, what can I tell you? I was smacked All in right. the gob too. All right. You just bring a non-perishable food item. Doors open at 5 o'clock. Okay, so we're going to have to go find Terry Andrews also, because oh, I've well got to have to talk to her, clearly. Oh, well, I would if I were you. Okay, you lead the way. Let's go All look right, for thank her. You. Okay. We'll be back. Uh, we're, we're just having such a great time with Be Who You Want to Be, this, uh, this show for Frosty and uh, Kinky Boots and the shows that we're working on. Uh, this, this whole season has been a season of love, but we are such an eclectic group of people yeah. working together. and. You know, we've got singer dancers, dancers who now got to sing, and singers who now got to dance, and now they got to become drag queens, and drag queens who are now becoming actors, and they all are working together and teaching each other, and and we are a really exotic group. It must have been really hard to keep that organized in your spreadsheet. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Andrews, thank you so much. Thank you. You have to go see all of this, and but I think you can leave your spreadsheets at home because this will be entertaining enough, yeah. not for clicking and yeah, formula. The spreadsheet will be up there on the light and the sound console. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> all right, folks, I have to introduce you to my new friend, the absolutely stunning Barbara Bardo. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? You look happy. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We're here getting ready for the Frosty Festival. Yes. Gonna sing a little ditty today for everyone. Um, and I look fabulous, so. You do, you do look <laughs> fabulous. You look yeah. absolutely fabulous. So as a part of the Frosty Festival, I understand that there's some entertainment that you might be a part of? Yes, yeah, so um, I am appearing with the cast of Kinky Boots from Tada Events. Shout out for all of us, get your tickets. Uh, but we're doing a big old show. Uh, Tada is uh, bringing in some cast from other shows as well to come and do a big performance at the Frosty Festival. Yeah. It's gonna be a blast. Excellent, so we're all excited to see, and you're gonna perform here with us today as well. Yes, of course, singing a song. Uh, it's a song from the show, Kinky Boots. It's, um, it's actually quite dramatic. It's um, a ballad. Uh, it's about fitting in and being yourself and uh, kind of the story my character goes through in the musical. I feel like you personally wouldn't have any reference for, for struggling to fit in and be yourself. I feel like, like that doesn't line up with your life at all. 
No, no, uh, nothing about it is relatable. I can't uh, connect at all. So I'm just that good of an actor. <laughs> so I think that the authenticity of that kind of a story, that kind of a performance, is exactly what is as compelling as the history that both yourself and Tada events in general have. So I'm excited to see it. I mean, I can't wait to be a part of it. Um, and to be a part of the Frost Festival as well, it's exciting. I'm not from Newfoundland, so it's my first Frost Festival I'm ever gonna be at, and I get to be a star in it. So uh, super excited, and just to tell this story, it's so important. Um, I love this musical so much. I actually have a tattoo of it on my arm from oh, years wow. ago, from way before I ever thought this would happen, so. Well, this is amazing. Uh, we're gonna adopt you, Barbara Bardot. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you so much. Nice chatting with you. Hello, here we are with Mr. Keith White, past chair of the Frosty Festival Committee. Keith, hi. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. We've been doing this now for a while. A long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're here at this luncheon. I'd like to do a couple of things. Sure. I'd like to eat first to tell me what I get to eat. But then secondly, if we could talk about what the luncheon is and then the entire Frosty Festival, because how many years deep are we now? This is the 44, for 41st annual Mount Pearl Frosty Festival. That's all. That's 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 even older than you, older isn't it? Than us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we the same age? Maybe. I feel like we're probably <laughs> the same age. Probably. So tell me a little bit about the luncheon. So today's the, basically the kickstart of the festival. Forty-one years in the making, obviously. So we do this luncheon today in preparation or in advance of ticket sales that obviously go on sale uh, this coming Saturday. So ticket sales, um, depending on when this airs, ticket sales um, go on sale Saturday the fourteenth um, of January, ten a.m. Available at FrostyFestival.ca. So uh, we do that in advance of that, kind of to promote the festival and highlight the festival and highlight our sponsors and all the great events and uh, things that we have to offer. So frostyfestival.ca, 10 o'clock in the morning on the 14th. That's right. And what are some of the events that you can get tickets to? Uh, some of the big events that we do, we do uh, a Saturday night concert. It's the f uh, biggest, uh, I guess, uh, kitchen party of 2023, the first kitchen party of 2023. Uh, oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, Shani Ganach, uh, the Irish Descendants, and the Navigators. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's going to be a great night presented by the North Atlantic Orange Store. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, having not been, we haven't had a festival, of course, since 2020. True. So first time back in three years. We're really looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. So we do that. There's, there's a little bit for everybody, right? There's seven days of festival, 60 events. So that's how we frame it, you know, 60 events over seven days there's something for everybody i also was looking through the order of things and and two things came to my eye that stood out to me um w there there are some there's a lot of like kid friendly things Absolutely. but there's also adult friendly things which i think is cool yeah there's there's definitely some adult things uh we have a beer show on friday the 10th so we anticipate that's going to sell out pretty quick so we have 12 local beer vendors food, entertainment, so that's uh, the, you know that's the second year we've done that now, and we brought it back because there was just so much overwhelming support the first year, so we're doing and that. Lots of uh, card games for seniors, and to your point, there's, there is something for everybody. Yeah. Swimming, skating, skiing, snowshoeing, um, so if you're an outdoor enthusiast, you know, somebody who prefers inside and in the warm, we've got lots of that as well. So lots of places to ski and snowshoe because you have 27 miles of trails. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I, rem I remember that, yeah. and I also found out that um, for the Cauldron Lighting and Parade of Lights, you've got a really, really engaging and entertaining host. Yeah, I heard that. Some guy named Jason Piercy. Yeah, yeah. He's, I also heard that he needs a haircut. Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to no, us here. Thank you for coming. And it's great to be back with, with the public stuff again. For sure. And I'm looking forward to that party. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith White, he's the man. I told you. There's something, something special happens when you take Sheila Guy Murphy and Terry Andrews and you put them together in the same room and you let them riff off of each other at something remarkable always comes out of it. Uh, Tada events are a special group of people. They're going to do a bunch of special stuff around the Frosty Festival. And speaking of special people and special things, right after this break, I will be back with Mr. Benny Alone from Wonderbolt Circus. Right back. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Okay, 
I would like to introduce you to the artistic director for Wonderbolt Circus, Mr. Benny Malone. Hello, sir. Hi, great to be here. Uh, great to have you. Um, so we're spending some time talking about the Mount Pearl Frosty Festival okay. in this episode. Yeah. And um, I have hosted the last number of them. Well, not the festival itself, but the Cauldron Lighting mm -hmm. and Parade of Lights. Rogers yeah. is a big sponsor of that. And um, you guys often perform here for yeah. our crowd. Yeah, it's we a love it. A love bit of a here. fire show, and there's yep. a lot of kids, so yep. it's all who's yep. and ahs yeah, and all of that stuff. Yeah, it's fire and ice. Fire and <laughs> ice, basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're in St. David's Field. So yeah. um, you're doing that again this year? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. looking forward to it. So, I mean, at this point, because I, I want to talk a little bit about that, like that upcoming show, mm -hmm. but then a little bit more about the history, because... I don't know, I'm not sure everybody knows you guys have been around for quite some time. Quite some time. <laughs> um, before we get into that, for these types of shows yep. that you have, like larger crowds, yep. are they sort of routines that are kind of in the pocket? Because I know mm -hmm. everything is so well rehearsed yep. and everything is so structured. Yeah. Well, especially with a fire show, I mean, it's very, very well rehearsed and, 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 and structured. Well, you know, we have a lot of different uh, entertainers. We uh, mix and match and, and, and put them together. We know, we know the effect that we want to have. We know the general flow that we want to have. In this day and age, you know, everyone can bring their own music and we can pull the soundtracks together, uh, for, for, uh, suiting each individual artist a lot better to what they want. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we, we do, we're always excited to do them. And sometimes we pull in aerialists and we mix them into the show, and yeah. then, you know, you, have a, y y you might have a, a clown, or we used to had a drag artist in the, uh, in the last show we did, which was great as an MC. So, you know, we're constantly mixing things up, trying to, trying to do what's right for the client, for the audience, for the mood we're into, you know, uh, trying to, you know, s what, what excites us. I, that's, a, that's an interesting point, because, <laughs> I mean, it is artistic, and you are a performer, mm -hmm. and th so there is a lot of rehearsal, and you are portraying I imagine varying degrees of different characters mm -hmm. at different points in time in the show. Yep. Obviously, your mood has a big impact on that. Yeah. Like th you're, you're depending on how you're going to present, and it never really crossed my mind that that would be the case with um, a circus performer. Or, I mean, you're very much actors. Well, we are, we're and, and 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 we express moods, and 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 you know, we try and atmospheres and, and stuff too, right? And and uh, you know, uh, the artists have their own acts and their own s uh, technical things, but they change them to the music. They change them to the to the uh, event that we're in. Uh, and sometimes, of course, we do shows that are specifically about things. Like last year, we did the best medicine show, which was really acting, because a lot of times circus is the acts, uh, you know, brought together in an, in a, in a theme or something like that. But some, th you know, I really love when we do a show where the acts are about the character. Like, you know, the person was a high diver, or, or so we put you're an You're telling a in. story, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that one was about a medicine man who, uh, and, he, and, and the family that he created from, you know, uh, you know, orphans and friends and people, just, you know, he was lonely, didn't know he needed a family, but he did. So it was great. Uh, so those are, those are really challenging and, yeah. really, and really rewarding. But it's always rewarding. It's and, and, you know, um, the, the artists bring in things that really reflect uh, uh, emotions and, and sometimes it's really just interpreting the music like a dancer. Other times it's about the act itself. And, so and they're putting it some of themselves into always, it. Always. So like oh yeah, always. So like the, the same character it. portrayed by multiple different performers would tell a different story. Yeah, and the same act done by yeah. multiple different performers. Even if it's all the same technical uh, maneuvers, you'll, you'll see a different, uh, a different performance. So as artistic director, is creating, for lack of better words and for not knowing the industry well i'm going to say choreography mm -hmm. so assembling the moves or yep. whatever in is that a part of what the artistic director does oh my god totally uh, yeah and, and uh, picking picking the shows that you want to use picking the artists you know uh giving up control to someone but making sure that it's the it, 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 it's within the artistic kind of uh goals of J wonder just, the just the intonation in your voice where you said giving up control yeah, to somebody. Yeah, I'm a control freak. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's sort of what I was that. getting at. I could tell the that. The biggest <laughs> lesson I learned in my life, I think, Jason, was, you know, giving over, giving up, yeah. finding the right people. So artistic directing is, is finding the right people. You, you discover in your career that, you know, there's a, a lot of different ways of doing things. Yeah. And you, ha I, uh, you always have a way to go in. you got to. But if someone has an idea that's equally good, 
I just don't let them do it because they're sure. going to do it that much better. They're going to give sure. that much more passion to it. With a, sh with a show, with a show, you you have to go some different places, and sometimes you have a script, and then then it's a little more different because you you know you 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 some one person got to interpret the script. Sometimes there has to be one director. Yeah, uh, circus is a little different because there's so many different acts and stuff. I mean, someone has to put their final stamp on it, but you know, hopefully the final stamp reflects the different artists. Wonderball really takes pride in the fact that we're like circuses often big circuses, you come in, you do your act, you have no say. You're, you're a cog in a machine. A beautiful, fabulous cog, but a cog. With Wonderbolt, we try to give people real input. Really, to they can they can maybe affect the, the, the uh, way the show goes, they the atmosphere of the show. Yeah, they have a voice, and they love that. That's why we're able to get, you know, Cirque du Soleil artists who come down and work with us repeatedly, you know, world famous artists. Oh, from really? from oh yeah, we have a m the roster of talent we've had over the last 40 years, and in the last 10 years especially, through Anna Harris connections from, you know, being a, a world circus artist, are amazing, but they come back and they ask to come now, even if they haven't been here before, because of our reputation of giving them a real say, a real creative input into the show, and they love that. So that's, that's, a, that's a real s a selling point for us. I get what you're saying, though, because not that each performer could have been anyone, because obviously there's only yeah. so many people on earth that are capable of, of mm -hmm. this. But of all of the people who are capable of it, any one of them interchanged, and I might not have ever noticed it. Yeah, well, the Cirque du Soleil, unlike Ringling uh, and uh, the older circuses, Cirque du Soleil, you can't name really a star no. from Cirque du Soleil. No. You don't have a Lou, you don't have a Lou Jacobs or an Otto Griebling or, you know, uh, these stars that, 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 that from the past. It's the show. Yes. The Cirque is the star. Uh, mainly because, you know, uh, back in the old days, stars had their big acts and they, w they were the draw. Now, now Cirque is the draw. But artists love having to have to have their own input, and you know I think so yeah. should have should have more. It, it makes so much sense. Yeah. It makes so much sense. Yeah. But yeah. now having all of that said, if everybody has their own input, somebody still has to say approved for the performance. Yeah. Like, and yeah. that's that's. Well, the stars your of call? Cirque became the uh, the directors like uh, Dragoni and uh, yeah. you know La Liberté and, and these guys. So you know I I I've, I've had people go to shows like oh people you know we a lot of we have a lot of sophisticated. Travelers in Newfoundland who've been around the world and come yes. to see shows everywhere and come back. And I've had a lot of people say, you know, I, I, yeah, I love your show as much or more than uh, Cirque du Soleil. And I, and I know what they're saying. It's not that we're bigger, grander, you know, you saw, oh, the amount of money and the, yeah, the, the it's expertise it's that's gone into it. But it's the intimacy yes. and the connection to the audience. And when you have that, that make, makes up for a lot of uh, big budget uh, things. We had the director for all, Sylvie Frechette. Uh, she was an Olympic artist. She helped do the choreography. She was an Olympic synchronized swimmer. She's come down twice and was a keynote speaker at our circus festival, and That's she amazing. loves it here. And she and she loves that kind of atmosphere of, uh, of the, the again the intimacy and the input that yeah. you get. Right. We we range from you know uh, solo shows obviously to to big spectacles and, and 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 of course the festival which is huge. So you know we 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 we, we get as an artistic director it's kind of satisfying in a way because you could I have so many different yes. ways of. Uh, of expressing what the circus does, you know, uh, right up to even even uh, when you're doing, um, you know, galas, you have big fundraising galas. So uh, you still so put what's coming together. up now? What are you so you're doing the Frosty Festival show yeah. at the Cauldron Lighting? Yeah, and we do have another a few other shows along that line because we do we do events like that. We have a we have an outreach program which we go out to up to Labrador, and oh we nice. teach circus skills. And, uh, and of course, Anna Harrio, my daughter, has the iFly program. So teaching and and sharing skills is a big part of Wonderbolt. So we have a big uh, Labrador outreach, which we'll be doing in May. And we're planning a huge, we had a 40th uh, whole year, which we did a whole bunch of things, but we never did a big fundraiser, and we haven't done one since, since the pandemic. So this year we're gonna have a big fundraiser in May. Okay. Uh, a lot of our alumni will be back to be in it, and it's gonna be you know, uh, you know, a big event. So we're looking forward to that. And of course, we have our festival coming up in the fall. We're planning, so we're planning for that. So we're too. a few months out from the the big May thing that you're doing. Yep. Maybe we can reconnect before then. Yeah, I like can great. help you push some no, attention, yeah, yeah, some love audience to. there. Yeah, we plan to have some good. You know, the MC is uh, it's all under wraps now, but uh, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a major event, big fundraiser, and a lot of fun. You know, it's it's a celebration. It's probably really the final uh, the final celebration of our 40 we're in our forty first year now, but yeah. it'll be the final kind of blow off celebration of of making it through forty and getting going on to our next forty years. Well it's sort of a shame that the whole world kind of shut down around the time when you could have been highlighting 
that 40 year of yeah history. it's shut down for everybody though you know yeah and i know it, but it, i'm just trying yeah. to like yeah like i get it i can only imagine yeah being so excited i think yeah. it's like everybody who like had their wedding planned then yeah. they had to cancel their wedding yeah yeah sort of thing. well but you know it was and also it was three years you know and my m we we went from uh uh, with the f with the circus fest, we went from fully, uh, you know, uh, live, yep. and suddenly uh, that 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 the first year of the pandemic, we it was like layers of an onion. Yeah. Suddenly it was going to be mainly live. Then you know we're going to have some uh, digital features, and then it's going to be half and but half. Then you're trying to figure and then it out. And then we changing. managed to squeeze one or two little live things into a major digital streaming. We learned a lot digitally, but you know it's not what we signed up for. Uh, so, you know, we, t we took what we learned digitally and we kept it, the things we like, but we are live. Circus is of yeah. any, any kind of art form. Circus should is live. should be live, yeah. So we are getting back, back to that. But so we do have a lot like of digital you content. you were juggling and the pins were changing, the balls were changing the Yeah, everything. and then just changing <laughs> to <laughs> light forms yeah. or something. Well, um, Benny, I'm really glad that you took time to come out. We're excited to see you at the Frosty Festival yeah, and all I'm the really other looking stuff. looking forward to it. And um, I got a feeling that before your big fundraiser in May, we'll talk again. Love to I come back and talk good. about it. Thank you very much. Kay. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with more right after this. Now that you know how exciting it's going to be and how much cool stuff there will be to see throughout the whole Frosty Festival, on Wednesday, February the 8th, from 6 to 8 p.m., is the Rogers Pedestrian Parade of Lights and Cauldron Lighting. So this is like the opening ceremonies of the Frosty Festival. The Parade of Lights starts up at O'Donnell. It's going to come down Ruth Avenue to St. David's Field, where we'll light the cauldron, and we'll probably hear a couple of boring speeches or something like that from some politicians or whatever. But myself and Lorabelle will be there, and Frosty will be there, and there'll be hot chocolate and stuff, and it'll be amazing. And we will see you there on February the 8th. Happy Frosty Festival. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. With clubs, leagues, and courts in